Holy smokes, look at that. I think I might have to get a couple of those on the card just to leave them like that, huh? Retro bassin, kicking some ass in wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Today we are out in the Ozarks, uh, just outside of Norfolk Lake in Mountain Home, Arkansas. I am out here on a little bit of a work trip and I did not plan to film an episode of Retro Bassing today. However, I made a run to pick up some coffee and I stumbled upon, honestly, what is one of the coolest little gold mines of a privately owned tackle shop I think I've ever seen. I was in there for literally five minutes. It blew my mind, so I ran outside before I picked up anything, grabbed my SLR camera because I wanted to bring you guys along to this place. We are standing outside of Jerry's Bait and Tackle in Mountain Home, Arkansas. Honestly, this is one of the coolest uh, privately owned tackle shops I think I've ever seen. You talk about old school stuff. It, it's, oh man. <laughs> I always, it's so old school that I gotta be honest with you, when I saw some of the things that I saw in there, there was a twinge of panic that I, if I didn't buy them right then, somebody else would come in and steal them. Um, there's some crazy local baits that uh, Jerry, the owner of this place, uh, tied. There are some storm wiggle warts that honestly I've got a high suspicion are pre rapala storm wiggle warts. Um, just, loads and loads of, of insane stuff so why don't you all come with me we're gonna make a quick stop into Jerry's and then I've got to grab some coffee and get back to the uh, <laughs> the mountain home I'll see you guys in there so we just cracked the front door here at Jerry's bait and tackle and right in the window there is a ton of local old-school goodness there is like a row of custom spinner baits that I think were made by Jerry that honestly these are awesome. So I will show you some of these bad boys. Check this out. There's just rows of old school custom spinner baits. Oh, look how old that is. That is that is living rubber that is not alive anymore. That is beautiful. Oh, look at that one. Single hook. Look how old school that thing looks. Wow. Holy smokes. And then there's more of them here. That almost looks like a Stanley wedge, doesn't it? And that skirt is actually like one of the old vinyl skirts. Look at that. That almost looks like a uh, Bass Pro Shops Tornado or something. Buzz bait. Ooh. Wow. Spinner baits five for ten dollars. Yeah, I think I might be taking five of these home. What do you think, guys? So are you kidding? Hidden among the spinner baits, look at this. A vintage rebel talking spoon. For two dollars. <laughs> That's crazy. Okay, so here's probably like one of the coolest sections I found at this tackle shop. Check it out, Jerry's Jigs. So I was talking to Paul who's working there and he says that these were actually hand tied by Jerry um, back in the day. He's actually since stopped tying his own jigs. So when these go, they're gone forever. These are awesome, we gotta take a look at these. Oh, look at that card, that is awesome. Jerry's hand tied jigs, those are <laughs> gorgeous. Holy smokes, look at that. I think I might have to get a couple of those on the card just to leave them like that, huh? You don't see old school hair jigs anymore, but look at that. 
And look at these, just... I could literally spend all day checking these things out. I mean, just the craftsmanship that went into them, the fact that they're hand-tied, and that they're still carded. Oh. <laughs> I told you guys I was gonna spend too much money here. Holy cow. That's the man that originally built the store back in 1960. Okay. He's since retired and he's not doing jigs anymore. But he used to but he used to do them all for like he'd hand tie them all? He hand tied them all. There's hair jigs there and regular regular um the, the old school rubber jigs and some newer ones. You don't see a lot of hair jigs anymore. Which ones are the most popular here? Uh usually orange and orange and browns. Okay, gotcha, like those guys. So I'm about to show you a little section that is gonna blow your mind. Check out all those warts. Not a surprise being um, in North Arkansas, just outside of Bull Shoals, but wow, I did not expect to find that. As you guys know, I am not a pre rapple a wiggle wart aficionado. I know just enough to be dangerous, just enough to spend too much money on eBay. But at first glance, it looks like there are some older wiggle warts. I don't know if they're categorically pre rapala or not, but let me show you these guys. So here I see some standard wiggle warts that are honestly, that's a money color, even if that's post rapala But look at this. You tell me that doesn't look old timey. Original Wart Series. It does say made in China. However, it does not say anything about Rappel on it, so I don't know. Let's see what it says on the bill. I don't see it say anything on the bill about that. So I don't know if that's a pre Rappel or not. Oh, and check these out. This looks like some sort of custom local wiggle wart, huh? Oh wow, Spring Creek Tackle. Oh, check that color out. Woo! I'll have to ask about this. So www.conradfishing.com. Uh, I'll drop a link to that down below. That looks pretty sweet. Okay, so I'm gonna pick a few of these up. You guys can drop a comment down below. Let me know if I made a good buy or a bad buy, but either way, if there's even a chance that these things are pre rappelas I'm not gonna leave two of them on the shelf for $5.49, right? <laughs> so I'll open this thing up, we get back to the studio and take a closer look. So I think I've located a little display of local soft plastics. Oh, there's some old school looking worms, man. You see what I'm saying? This place is insane. Okay, so what are these called? Tater Baits. Do they have a website? Dude, they don't even have a website. But look at that, a seven and a half inch, or seven inch sea tail worm. That's old school. Oh, look at that old red worm. Kidding me? Purple red. Ooh, look at that. It's almost like a red root beer. That's pretty cool, but look at that. That might have to come back with us. That is... That is old timey. Okay. When you talk about like the vintage worm journey, you guys have to check out this aisle. There are nothing but, it looks like rows and rows of custom soft plastic baits in some old timey forms. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we've got some worms here. Look at this. Old school phenom worm for a dollar twenty-nine. Kidding me. Oh, look at that. Motor oil color. Oh. We've got some big old worms here. Oh, <laughs> look at that. An eleven inch. I think that might be a, a Jean LaRue worm. So what is this? Lucky Strike Twiddletail. What? Dude. More salty tubes than you would need to brine a turkey. Holy cow. 
and just look at that jelly worm white grape. That is not a color you see anymore. <laughs> Every time I think I'm done in here, I discover another little nook and cranny of this place. So one of the most sought after old school plastic worms is the gator tail. I don't know why. Um, I mean, obviously it still catches fish today, but go scour eBay and try to find a gator tail worm. You're gonna be paying, honestly, sometimes like two bucks a worm for something out of the package. It's insane. So right here, I found a whole jar of them. Um, they call them twisters, but this is 100% a gator tail worm. I've been looking for gator tails for a while and just can't bring myself to spend the money on eBay to get them. But right now I can get six of them for a dollar. <laughs> okay, so this says twisters, 25 cents each or six for a dollar. But that, my friends, is 100% an old school gator tail. Yep, there it is. So that is an old gator tail worm. <laughs> Man, uh, you can't find those anywhere. That is insane. <laughs> so it's bagging yourself here at Gary's as well. So what I got is a bag of 24 original gator tail worms for four bucks. <laughs> Just crazy. So check out this room. This is the lore making mecca. This entire room is filled up with equipment to make your own lures. I mean, as you guys know, I love to go down a rabbit hole or two, and I think that lure building might be one too many rabbit holes, even for the old retro basser. If I got involved in that, it'd just be too much. But I am gonna show you some of the pretty cool stuff around here, wow. Oh my goodness, look at this. These are all skirts, and check this out. More skirts. Got hooks just for every kind of lure you could think of. <laughs> Different lead molds. Uh, terminal tackle. Oh, there's some paint. And all of these look to be spinnerbait blades. <laughs> so, hey guys, we're, we're at this tackle shop I'm back. So this is my buddy Paul, Bass and Bud, who um, we actually connect on Instagram quite a bit. Um, it's what, flyologist? Flyologist well, one, yeah. Okay, so we're in here and um, he goes, there's retro bass and so. <laughs> yeah, um, I think that's cool. the first time I've actually been spotted in public, <laughs> to be honest with you. <laughs> so uh, anyway, next time I am back out this way, I think we might um, hit Norfolk or Bull Shoals. What do you think? We'll see what's happening, so yeah. We'll see what's happening. Uh, this has been a brutal trip, man. I gotta tell you, I was out here, not a rod with me, and I drove over that lake, and it's like the most pretty lake ever. Yeah, fish has um, been good too, so. And I've got, I'm leaving with like 100 pounds of tackle and no rods, so you know. Um. <laughs> Holy cow. Well, Bass and Buds, that was uh, definitely a worthwhile stop. I'll wait till we get back to the old Retro Rants to crack open this stuff and show y'all what I got. But holy cow, that was, uh, that was cool. I could have spent hours in there. Um, so the guy's name who runs the place is Paul Nelson. Uh, awesome dude. Honestly, I didn't get to talk to him too much, but every customer that came in, uh, he sounds like he really knows the lakes around here. So it was pretty cool to listen to him uh, chat it up about uh, Lake Norfolk and also Bull Shoals. So unfortunately for me, this was a pretty quick stop in Arkansas. I'm literally here for just two nights. Didn't bring the boat. Honestly, I didn't even bring a fishing rod, but I'm going home with some retro bass and gold. I'll see you guys back in the studio. Well, Bass and Buds, welcome back to the old Retro Ranch. We are back here in Texas after our little stop out in Mountain Home, Arkansas. And I have got a few goodies to show you guys. It was a great trip, all said and done. Kind of bummed I didn't get to do any fishing out there. But ironically enough, I made a great uh, point of contact with one of the Bass and Buds out there in Mountain Home, Arkansas. That's Flyologist 1. And I think I'm gonna probably be out there in the next month or two. 
and hopefully we're either gonna hit Bull Shoals or Norfolk Lake. I keep calling it Norfolk, but even it's Norfolk, so. Anyway, um, I ended up with getting a few goodies from Gary's Tackle Shop. Honestly, um, watching the footage from that, I could totally go back there and spend like an hour. It was an amazingly old school kind of place. I think it really kind of encapsulates everything that is this channel. You know, to me, I don't know if you noticed, but there were a lot of great new school baits that I kind of glossed over. It's kind of my style, right? Um, but when you get down to the nooks and crannies of a place like that, the dirtier, the dustier, the more faded the packaging, honestly, the more I am totally hooked. I'll show you a few of the things I picked up from Jerry's, but I've got a pretty strong suspicion that I'll be back there before too long, and I'll probably walk out with a few more trash bags worth of old school tackle. So first things first, uh, we'll open up this package here. Okay, we'll discuss these in a hot minute. So y'all saw this spinnerbait aisle or spinnerbait clothesline, as it were. I picked up uh, 10 of these old school spinnerbaits that I think were all handmade by Jerry. So according to Paul Nelson, who is now the owner of that tackle shop, but he has been since I think 2015 or so, Jerry was the founder. He founded the tackle shop somewhere around 1960. And now Jerry is in his 90s and has since retired from lure making. But before he retired, he made a boatload of jigs and spinnerbaits that are still for sale at Jerry's Quick Stop. So I will show you some of the ones that I picked up. Here is uh, a really nice one. Um, this is a sort of silicone skirt and marabou combo. I noticed a lot of Jerry's spinnerbaits had this sort of hand-painted eye. I just love it. And a really, really unique, almost tortoise-shaped spinnerbait blade. It's got a short arm spinnerbait. Uh, that is an awesome bait. I don't know if I'm gonna be throwing that or not. I mentioned uh, there were a couple that looked like a Stanley Wedge, and I did grab one of those. That is really a Stanley Wedge type looking head. Um, the blade itself, it's not a wedge blade, but that's a really nice Colorado blade with sort of the, almost the pinstripes on it. Looks like a 3 8 of an ounce bait, and that one will probably be money. Uh, here's another Jerry's Custom. This one is straight up bucktail. It's got the eyes and that old school looking blade. I have never seen a blade like that, to be honest with you. That's kind of why I think I grabbed a few of these things. Okay, so here is an interesting one. So this one is just a standard silicone skirt, a nice hammered Colorado blade, and a, a little Sampo swivel of some sort. Another one, almost like an identical spinnerbait as well. So this was an interesting one I picked up. So it's almost got a shad profile if you look at the head there. And it's got a standard really nice big willow leaf spinner, but that's a pretty cool looking spinnerbait. Uh, another standard Jerry's custom hand-tied spinnerbait. And there's another one. That looks like a quarter ounce. So that one's nice. And that's a living rubber skirt that is actually still alive today. Here is an interesting one. So this is looks like a little heavier. This probably feels like a half-ounce spinnerbait. And a nice little hammered Colorado blade. And last spinner bait I've got was this one. This one looks like another half ounce or one ounce bait. Colorado Blade. Honestly, these are so good looking. When I finally get the Retro Bass and Tackle Shop up and running, I might just have to display these because, I don't know, it's just awesome. Um, in addition to that, the one other thing I also picked up in the spinner bait aisle, which was not a spinner bait, was a very random Rebel Talking Spoon. Um, interesting weedless spoon, sort of like a Johnson Minnow. And it talks. 
or rattles. Okay, so those are my spinner baits. As far as jigs, I went a little bit crazy, I gotta be honest with you. There is just something about a carded, old school hand tied jig that honestly I just can't resist. Add to that the fact that these were all made by hand by the original founder of the tackle shop and that they are no longer available in production. Those are totally the ingredients for a retro bassing rabbit hole. So I got a few of these I'll show you real quick. So here's a nice one. Um, this says 3 8 ounce hair jig. Looks like a quarter ounce jig maybe. And I tried to pick up ones that were carded but also had every one in place. I've got a feeling I might fish a couple of these but for the most part these are gonna be for display. So there's another nice one with a weed guard. I mean, <laughs> awesome. Red and chartreuse, that's not a color you see too often. This almost has that finesse jig tie style with a skirt, but looks like a standard skirt or even a living rubber. 3 8 ounce, yep, that's a living rubber skirt. Half ounce. You see what I'm saying? Rabbit hole. <laughs> There's another pack. Okay, so here is, this is pretty cool. This is a football head style, which honestly, I fish a ton. So I actually love this style of jig. And this one looks almost like a more modern jig, to be honest with you. Uh, one more with a living rubber skirt. Looks like a chartreuse in black. And the last one. This looks like a yellow, brown, and black. Bass and Buds, tell me you would not have grabbed this if you saw this on the shelf. Um, <laughs> love it. So apparently, Jerry was a pretty prolific jig tire. So even though I feel like I cleared out the jig section there, Honestly, there is probably a thousand pounds of lead still on the shelf for any bass and buds who want to go check it out. So while I was in the back room of Jerry's, it's that lure making section that's got the skirts and the lead and the paint and the spinnerbait blades. I saw an entire shelf full with some really pristine looking tackle boxes and I asked uh, Paul what was going on. Apparently, Paul knew an avid angler who um, was mostly a musky fisherman but also had done some bass fishing as well. And um, for health reasons, he was getting rid of all of his tackle. So I ended up digging through most of that off camera. And honestly, I'm probably going to have to go back to Jerry's to do an entire episode just on this collection. This collection that Paul picked up, um, it was mind-blowing. I mean, there were just boxes and boxes of, honestly, every kind of bait you could think of from the 1950s up, and apparently the buyer always bought at least three. So I weeded through it as quickly as I could, um, but it was almost too overwhelming in the short time that I had. So hopefully when I get back to Mountain Home, there is a few more of those left that I can go through. But in the meantime, I did pick up this, and I will crack it real quick and show you what's inside. Uh, so by and large, most of the baits in here are really old school Rapala fat wraps. Most of them are the uh, shallow fat wrap. It's got that nice uh, short diving lip. There are a few with the longer bill on there as well. Like this guy. In addition to that, there are a couple of non Rapala type baits that are of note. There was one of these. This is an old school um, jute long wood straight king dancing shad. Or dance shad, I forget which. I'm going to need the help of y'all to figure out what this thing is. This is an old crankbait. Obviously a crawfish imitation. I don't know who makes that at all. 
Drop a comment down below if you do, but that looks like an oldie and a goodie. There were also a couple of these, an old school Bagley. Looks like a small fry or something like that. If I can get it in focus. Focus, there we go. <laughs> small fry. And looks more like a shad profile small fry as well. All said and done, uh, this was a pretty good find. But what I do wanna talk about next is this. When you walk into a tackle shop deep in the Ozarks, it really should not be a surprise that there are a ton of wiggle warts. And if I was not such an old school kind of guy, I probably would have really dug deep into the color selection there. I feel like they had about 30 different colors and honestly some really insane schemes that I have not seen anywhere. But you know me, the older the better. And I found what were the three oldest baits on the rack. Now, I don't profess to be a, a wiggle wart expert, so I'm gonna rely on you guys to help me out with what I purchased, but I will show it to you. I found three of these, which appear to be rather old wiggle warts. Now, um, I, one of them actually, you can see the packaging is coming apart a little bit, so I did open it up and I will show you what it says. Drop a comment down below. Let me know, is this a pre rappel wiggle wart? Is it a post rappel wiggle wart, or is it maybe somewhere in between. And I'm kind of thinking that might be it. So first things first, it's got a nice blue package. It says Storm Wigglewort on it. Now, when you look at the back, a couple things that are interesting to me. Number one, it does say made in China. And I know that, you know, when you talk about like the classic pre of Wigglewort, the most of them are made in Mexico. However, it also says Storm Manufacturing Company, and it does not mention Rapala at all. So the packaging is kind of coming apart on this one, so I'll open it up and show you the inside as well. So the inside does just say Storm. So there's really nothing at all on the packaging that says Rapala. Now the bait itself, and let's look at this. So first off, it says neither Storm nor Wigglewort on the bottom of the bill. And for those of you who know, basically the classic old school pre rappel Wiggleworts say Wigglewort, the newer ones say Storm. So that is sort of like the number one telltale whether or not you've got a pre rappel or a post. This one does not say either. I'm looking at the bill and I'm feeling it Honestly, that feels to me like a pre rappel a bill. It's got that ridge. It's a, just a little bit crooked. So when it comes to how this bait sounds, it's got sort of that more deeper thud of an old school pre rappel -a version of the wiggle work. I do have one that I am confirmed is a, a pre rappel -a. This one I did not pick up from Jerry's, but on the back, it does say made in Mexico, and it's got the red instead of the blue. So maybe this is pre rappel and maybe it's post, but either way, I bought these for $5.49, and honestly, I am pretty happy with that buy all said and done. Um, look, I, I shop at the big box stores just like anybody else, but to me, there is something honestly magical about stepping back in time into a tackle shop that has had one or two owners, owners that make their own baits, um, places that have lures that honestly have long since been discontinued, and that chance to find something that, again, has been off the shelf for maybe 30 years. So hopefully you guys enjoy this kind of content. It's unfortunate, but I don't think places like this get enough press. And when it comes to YouTube fishing, they certainly don't get any love from the Mystery Tackle Box crowd. So please, Bass and Buds, do me a favor. If you know a place in your neck of the woods, uh, drop the name of it down below. Let me know who I should talk to there. Um, you'd be surprised at the uh, traveling Mr. Retro Bassin does around the country. And if you've got a little independent shop like Jerry's that you'd like to see featured on this channel, please hit me up. I am always looking for ideas and I'm always on the road. So until next time, 
shop local, and definitely fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bastard.